Hi, I'm Alan Tatro with Global Sugar Art, and today I'd like to talk to you about all the different coloring dusts that are available on the market and the difference between them. There's a lot of confusion out there, and probably the most frequent phone call we get from customers is, what dust do I use and how do I use it? So I'm hoping to, to solve a lot of the problems and answer a lot of your questions today. First, I'd like to talk to you about the gradings of dust. On the market, we have the, the general uh, dusts that have been available for many, many years are considered non-toxic. Now, that doesn't mean they're FDA approved, it just means they're non-toxic. And the, the reason that they're considered non-toxic, there's no nutritive value to these. Think of makeup, think of lipstick um, or chapstick. They're, they're considered non-toxic. Anything that you put on your lips is going to be ingested but it's not necessarily food. So when you're thinking of a lot of the petal dust and the luster dust and the pearl dust that are on the market, they're, they're listed as non-toxic, as a decorative item for food, but they're not necessarily a food additive. Over the last couple of years, uh, we've also seen a whole line of products come out that are FDA approved. Now these are actually food colorings in a powder form that we're now using on the gum paste and on the flowers and on our cakes. Uh, many of the restaurants are requiring that all the dust be FDA approved as a food additive. So that's the difference between the, just the, the dust that are considered non-toxic and the dust that are FDA approved. Now there are a couple dusts, specifically the silver highlighter and the gold highlighter, and there's also a bronze and copper out on the market that are not FDA approved and they are, they are actually toxic. They're not labeled non-toxic. These are for decorative purposes only. They're the dust that give you that really metallic silver and gold finish that a lot of people are looking for in buttons and accent pieces. But they have to be put on a decoration that is removed from the cake. So it's usually used on a piece of gum paste that it's going to be dried. It'll be in a floral decoration or maybe a little mold, an emblem or something that will be removed from the cake prior to serving. So let's start with petal dust. Um, the, the petal dust are a flat finish product. They will give you a matte finish. The petal dust come in soft pastel colors down to very, very deep uh, burgundies and magentas and uh, deep daffodils and black and, and dark browns, of course. The idea of the petal dust is to put those on a flower. You can take a white piece of gum paste, a white flower, and you can completely color it with the petal dust. So that, that's what the petal dust are for. Now the luster dust and the shimmer dust and uh, the, the new sterling pearl dust on the market all have a satin finish to them. They all have a little bit of a luster. Now, they're not going to color a flower or a decoration a deep color like a, pe like a petal dust will. They're going to give you a softer color with a little bit of a, um, a shine on it. The third classification, which you don't see a lot of, are sparkle dust. Now, sparkle dust is like a luster dust, but it's, a, it's a, a heavier grain. So what I really like using sparkle dust for is to sort of give that dewy effect on a flower. So I might make a rose, and I might uh, cover it with a pink luster dust to give it a little bit of a shine. And then I might take a little bit of the, like this is a cotton candy pink sparkle dust, and I may just put a little bit on the edges of the petals, and it gives them that little, it almost looks like dew in the morning. It gives them a little sparkle just on the edges. So the sparkle dust, aptly named sparkle dust, will give a little sparkly effect, but it won't cover the product in color. It's just going to give a little bit of sparkle. The other uh, line of dust on the market, uh, we, uh, the GSA line, are twinkle dust, there's disco dust, uh, they're called fairy dust. There's many, many different names for them. This, this is almost like glitter, like you'd find in a craft store. Um, it's a non-toxic product, and it really gives a very glittery effect. It, this does not color a product at all. If you take a white piece of gum paste and you brush it with glitter um, or the twinkle dust, all you're going to see is specks of color. It won't give you a nice 
uh, complete covering of color. Um, the highlighters I talked to you about a little bit. Um, the highlighters are, they actually are toxic. They're not to be eaten, but they are used to give a metallic shine to a product that can be then removed from the cake. And the last line of products are the sparkle dust. Um, excuse me, this is the mystical dust, not sparkle dust. But it also gives you a sparkly effect. And the most popular is called the snowflake sparkle. And if you sprinkle these on a cake after, they sort of make the whole cake uh, glitter like sort of a winter fairyland look. Now, how do you use these dusts? We'll start back with the petal dust. Petal dust are water soluble. So you can mix these with water and put them on with a flat brush, or you can use them dry. So this is the only one that is water soluble. Everything else is not water soluble. So that's, it's easy to remember that, petal dust and water. Now you can also use lemon extract or an alcohol with these, but they are soluble in water. All the rest of the dust, the luster dust, the sparkle dust, the highlighters are um, oil soluble or alcohol soluble. So a lot of people like to use lemon extract, not lemon juice, don't think of lemon juice. This has to be a lemon extract, which is an oil base or you can use a clear alcohol like uh, uh, vodka or gin, um, or you can buy just a clear flambe alcohol in the liquor store that they flambe um, foods with. And that works just as well. So I want to, I have some daisies made here, and I want to show you basically how to use some of these colors. So I'll move some of these out of the way. And when I'm using colors, I always put a paper towel down because they're a mess and they, get, they sort of get everywhere. So this is a petal dust, this is fuchsia. Now, a lot of the colors come in these little bottles with the plastic lids and a lot of people have trouble opening with them. Just use an old fashioned can opener and they pop right open. You don't have to break fingernails trying to get these open. So you can see it's a very flat looking powder. It's a matte finish. So if I want to cover a flower completely, and I want this to be, uh, I, I don't want to see any white through this, I'm going to use a flat brush. A natural bristle works well. And don't be afraid to use your color. And you can just, you just sort of push it right into the product. And you can see that it's, it's going right into the pores of the flower. Of course, you always have to be afraid not to break your flowers when you do this. So I'm putting it down on the board so that the pressure is absorbed by the board. I would never hold it like this and, and, and dust it, or I'm going to break a petal for sure. So that's the effect that this color gave, gives me. Now, there are deeper colors that would give me a deep, deep uh, uh, fuchsia as well. Now, if I want to set this color, and make it a little bit darker, I would actually bring some water to a boil or use a little clothes steamer, and I would run this over steam. Just one or two passes over the steam will set the petal and it will actually darken a little bit. By setting the color, when you're decorating a cake and you're working with these flowers, you don't have dust falling down onto your cake and making little bits of, of purple all over the place because the steam has actually set your color. So that's, a, that's an important trick and you'll see a lot of people use it. So flat brush with petal dust if you want a, de a, a deep color. So that takes care of that one. So let's just move this out of the way. Now the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one of the luster dusts. Okay. Oh, we have a nice apricot luster dust here. Now this will be a little shinier. I'm going to use a round brush on this, just a soft round brush. Dip it in the dust and there we go. And you'll see that this is going to give me a soft finish. It's not going to be a really deep color. What this is really nice 
is if you want to cover a flower with a luster dust and get a soft pastel flower and then you could take a little bit of the petal dust and just touch the edges and you get that little deep color uh, that the, the, the beginning of a new petal or a new leaf has or sometimes even the center if you're doing a rose and you want the center of the rose to be a deeper color than the outside you can use different dust to create that effect so you can see the luster dust gives you a little bit of a shine um, but it doesn't de it, it's not a really deep color now you can use I've got all my colors mixed up here for you uh, let's see I have a pink luster dust you can combine colors don't be afraid to do that and you can top coat a petal dust with a little bit of a luster dust and you can see the change in here I still have that nice purple beneath it but now I've created a nice sort of sheen uh, and the pink has sort of softened the tone. So don't be afraid to experiment with your colors and mix petal and luster together. Start with the, the flat first and then go with the luster. Or you can just use them as they are, just, just one at a time. The last one I wanted to show you is the, um, excuse me, is the highlighter. And I just wanted to show you quickly, I know I have it here. Um, but I'm, there we go. This is the gold highlighter. Now you would not normally paint a daisy gold, but I just wanted to show you the effect. If I'm going to liquefy any of the dust, the petal dust, the luster dust, the highlighter, I always put it in the cap. I have a little bit of vodka here and I'm just going to put a little bit in the cap. The reason that I do that in the cap is that when I'm done I just let that dry and then I just put the cap on and there's no waste. Any of the petal dust that's left will go will go right um, back into the bottle. Oops. There we go. I want a nice small brush and I just mix that up. You can see it's, a, it's just a nice mixture that you, now you can use this dry as well, but you can see the effect. If I had a button, um, the effect that that gold highlighter gives. Now again, that's a decoration that would be removed from the cake. When I'm done, just put this aside, the alcohol will evaporate, and then just put the cap back on. Any dust that's left in there will fall back into the little pot. So there's no waste. So that is basically what you need to know about dust. You have the flat petal dust, you have a little bit of shimmer and shine from the pearl dust and the luster dust, and um, then you have the highlighters. Probably the most popular dust is going to be the super pearl dust. And I have a large container of it here. This is the one that you see on TV all the time. You can liquefy this with a little bit of alcohol or lemon extract. I've seen people use two inch paint brushes and paint the entire side of a wedding cake or a whole tier of a wedding cake and get a beautiful pearlized cake out of it. Or you can use the powder dry and just apply it. And you get a beautiful pearlized white finish with that. Now the pearl dust also comes in violet pearl, gold pearl, blue pearl. When you look at the dust it doesn't really look violet or blue or gold, but it will reflect those tones when you put it on the, on the uh, flower or whatever decoration you're making. Um, so you'll see as, as it turns and the light shines off it, you'll see reflections of violet or blue or gold. It's not going to turn it that color like the, uh, like the luster dust would. So that's that dust. One last trick I wanted to share with you is clean up. Because this dust, when it gets on a board or on your silicone mat, and it will, trust me, it will get there. <laughs> um, 
is hard to clean. I could take a sponge and try to wipe this off and it won't come off completely because that dust just gets right into the pores of any surface, even countertops. So an old trick that works super easy is to take a little bit of shortening in your hand and just rub it on the board or the countertop and the shortening pulls it right out of the surface. That works with the cell pads, with the cell boards. I've got a little bit of purple right here on my silicone mat and I can pull it right up with a little bit of shortening and a paper towel. So the cleanup is really, really easy. Um, when you want to clean your brushes, the best thing to do is to really mix them in dry cornstarch first and that will actually remove a lot of the coloring and then use a, a good soap like Dawn or a good uh, uh, grease cutting detergent and wash them really well, rinse them in hot water and then air dry them before you put them away. So the cleanup is really uh, pretty easy if you know how to do it. Thanks for watching and I hope you've learned something about all the decorating dust available on the market today. Thank you.